40 minutes, I think. Okay, the first 40 minutes is going to be about Crave the Wave. And the, after that, we're going to talk about the two engineering events I did, which are Electric Right Stuff and Mousetrap Vehicle. Okay, yeah, so for Crave the Wave, um, you've seen an example of how it affects in our lives, poor dog. So Crave the Wave is fully a studying contest. You're allowed a cheat sheet binder where you can print out stuff from the internet and write your own notes and put basically everything in it, but you can't put um, electronics. You can't use the internet during the contest and you are allowed scratch paper and a calculator. So this basically this event involves um, everything about waves, including like many different topics like ocean waves and sound, sound waves. Wave? Yeah, sound waves. Okay. Wait, does this event involve electromagnetic waves? Yes, it does. Okay, so the topics uh, here, it generally covers general wave characteristics, wave types, wave phenomena, uh, electromagnetic waves, and spectroscopy. But today we're basically just going to go over the first three uh, because that's all we're going to have time for. Overall, there is a little bit of random knowledge associated with that. Occasionally, it has questions like, I showed you the Tacoma Bridge video later. It would see what type of wave was shown there. We'll answer that later. Okay, so first of all, uh, here's the two basic types of wave. These are mechanical waves. So there's two types, transverse S waves and longitudinal waves, P waves. So uh, S waves involve radio waves, like waves in water and waves on a string you would see after you pluck a violin. And uh, P waves are more like sound waves. So there are the basic parts of all the waves. Let me, let me just draw along really quickly. Oh no, okay. Sorry. Okay, so there we go. So this part, I'm going to mark everything that I'm writing with red, like in a circle. So this part would be the crest of the wave. And this part, the bottom part would be the trial of the wave. So it's actually, no, it's it's not the S wave. Uh, these, I think, I believe these are primary waves and secondary waves, but yeah. So the P wave also has a crest and trial, but it's technically called the rarefaction and the compression. So this would be the crest of the P wave, and this would be the uh, trial of the P wave. And uh, I think I've labeled them here if you can read it. Okay, yeah, so the distance between two crests of a wave is called the wavelength. And the direction in which the wave, the energy is moving is called the direction of propagation or direction of movement. Meanwhile, uh, the direction of oscillation is the direction that the particles are moving. In S waves, the particles are moving uh, up and down and in P waves, they're moving back and forth. Okay, yeah, so, um, these are some basic equations that you should know. So frequency equals, uh, frequency is inversely proportional to um, period and velocity equals wavelength times frequency, which also equals wavelength over period. Okay, I yeah, will go over that later with some problems. For now here, uh, here are two of the animations that I found that demonstrate these things. I demonstrate these types of waves, I think, pretty well. I'm sorry, I, I keep going too far forward. Anyways, okay, so these are the types of waves that I just talked about. So the one on the left is the S wave, and on the one on the right is the P wave. So let's say if you had a slinky, how these would work is an S wave would be if you shook it up and down, and a P wave would be if you, um, just took a section of it and then you compressed it and then you suddenly let it go. If you've ever done that, you know that both of, the, uh, both of these times, the waves bounce back and forth between the sides of the slinky. Additionally, there's also torsional waves that I haven't talked so much about. So basically torsional waves, yeah, basically like, push, like pushing it for the P wave. For torsional waves, you would just take a little bit of the top uh, of the front of the slinky and then you would twist it. And then basically torsional waves go like just twisted side, uh, sideways. So yeah, 
onto this slide, which type of wave do you think the uh, Tacoma Bridge is? You can DM it to me so that you don't clog the chat. Okay, so yeah, I've been getting a mix of S waves and torsional waves. That was actually torsional waves. If you go back and watch it, it the bridge was mo uh, not mostly going up and down, but from side to side instead. Yes, I agree, they were waves. <laughs> okay, yeah, so um, I have uh, two questions here. Answer in the chat again. The maximum distance from a point on a transverse wave to its rest position is defined as the and this is a vocabulary word. I'm not sure if I covered it earlier. If you know it, you know it. And um, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's correct. This is the amplitude of the wave. Let, let me annotate. Okay, so if you had a wave that looks like this, the amplitude, uh, imagine it's divided in half. I can't really draw with a mouse right now. The amplitude of a wave would be this length and it's supposed to be also be this length. Yeah. Okay, so. Right, next slide, this is problem number two. Okay, guys. So um, I have the equations written up here. A traveling wave of period 4.0 milliseconds, no, this milliseconds, one second equals a thousand milliseconds, travels along a stretch string at a speed of 70 meters per second. Calculate the wave's wavelength in meters to two significant figures. Uh, you're allowed to use a calculator for this. I think I mentioned it earlier. So I'm going to give you guys around one minute to uh, plug it into your calculator and answer this question. Then you can DM it to me in the chat. If you don't get it, that's okay too. I'll explain the question later. Okay, so to everyone who's listening, um, that's about it. So uh, here I have the answer. It's actually 0 0.28 meters. You have to notice that, um, oh my God, sorry. This is instead of wavelength divided by 0 0.06, it's supposed to be divided by 0 0.004. Let me correct that in the chat, send it to everyone. So I noticed a lot of people said uh, 280. Something important here you need to keep track of is the units. So instead of saying, giving you the time in seconds, they give you it in milliseconds. So you have to convert it to seconds before you can use it. Okay, so that's 0 0.004 seconds. And yeah. Okay, uh, we'll have more of these questions in the Kahoot later. Yeah, sure, I can go back to the problem. Ah, if only it worked. Okay, did you guys get that? Sorry. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, move on to the next part. So basically we're going to discuss wave phenomena. So something interesting that you've seen about, you might have seen about waves, if you've played with the slinky before is the waves tend to interfere with each other. So um, lambda represents wavelength. 
uh, lambda is wavelength. It's a common connotation used for wavelength, yeah. So um, in constructive interference, the waves would add up with each other. And in destructive interference, they cancel each other out. It doesn't have to be all the way. But say you have a wave with uh, amplitude A and another wave with, or another pulse with amplitude B. When they meet each other, the amplitude is going to be A plus B, and then they'll go their separate ways again. Same thing for destructive interference, except for B here would be negative. Okay, so now we're going to move on to something slightly a little bit more confusing. So this is called the Doppler effect. What happens is if you've ever gone outside and you notice that like a siren was coming towards you, it would sound, it sounds more high pitched when it's closer to you than when it's further away. So what happens there is let's say, okay, I'm going to annotate again. Basically, we can imagine the sound waves. I think I mentioned earlier that sound waves are longitudinal. So here, these white lines are going to be the ones that represent the crests or the compressions of the longitudinal waves. And then the space in the middle is the, um, it's the rarefactions of the wave. So this would have, uh, this is the crest and this is the trail. This is the refraction, this is the compression. Okay, so um, this is just like ripples in a lake. But if the center of the circles is moving forward, let's say your um, car is moving, then that means that the space between the waves in front of here is going to end up being smaller and the space here is going to end up being bigger because the center of the circle uh, keeps moving forward. Let's say in this case, it would be to the right. Center of the circle is here, the next one is here, and so on. So if you're here, then the frequency of the waves is going to be a lot more than if you were standing here, which is why you would hear it as more high pitched if the object is getting closer to you. So the equation I've wrote here, um, I've put it on the left side of the screen right now. The equation of this would be the observer frequency of sound equals the speed of the sound waves in air, which usually is estimated as 343, sometimes 343.2. And it um, varies a little bit depending on temperature. But usually you can just use 343 plus the observer velocity, which is how far, uh, how fast it's going away from this car here. and plus 343 over 343 plus the source velocity, which is how fast the source is moving in the other direction. All of this times the actual frequency of the sound waves that it's emitting. Okay, so you can um, just substitute in these variables and solve for different values. Okay, I think I have a problem here. No, no, I don't. Okay, there we go. We'll go back to electromagnetic waves later. So speaker B is turned off, but speaker A is left on. Mahir stands at the origin and fires and runs at him with constant velocity while holding to, uh, onto speaker A. Does the pitch that Mahir hears increase, decrease, or stay the same over time as far as it gets closer? Okay, so for this question, I realize I didn't word it very well. I'm just, okay, so uh, Richard is actually correct. It would, um, depends on how fast Farzan gets closer. However, uh, if the Mahir hears the, it would definitely increase when the speaker is going more towards him than when it's going further away from him. Okay, I'm sorry, I worded this question badly. So basically, I, I'm not sure if anyone doesn't get it, you can ask me, like just interrupt me right now and ask me about the doc 
Doppler effect. But basically, that's it for the Doppler effect. And um, I'm just going to go back to electromagnetic waves really quickly. OK, here we go. So this is just a really fast recap of electromagnetic waves. I think this picture is really useful. You might want to save it. So basically, what you want to know for these things is uh, what each of these are for. And you're not going to, be, I'm not going to test you on that today on the Kahoot, but you need to know what it's for, usually the wavelength and the frequency and stuff like that. And have an idea of it, idea of it, like how big it is on a scale in your head. Okay, so for okay, so for next we're going to go on to reflection and refraction. For reflection, there's really not that much to say about it. You look in the mirror, you see yourself in the mirror. It depends on if it's a concave mirror or a convex mirror. You might look bigger or smaller. But um, so the basic ideas for it is the laws of refraction. The normal incident and reflected ray all lie on the same plane. So basically, um, if you oh that's not a good line. It's clear. So if you had a grid like this. There's, also, there's a, yeah, there's a line. Where? Uh, this one? I, I'm, I'm currently drawing this line. Sorry. OK, so basically, if you can see this, this thing here that I'm currently trying to color in is going to be the mirror. So the angle of incidence is the angle in which the light beam uh, strikes the mirror. And it's always going to be equal to the angle at which the light leaves the mirror with respect to the normal. The normal ray is this ray, uh, the one with a 90 degree angle to the mirror. Okay, the incident ray also always equals, like the angle of incidence always equals the angle of reflection. And an image in a glass mirror is virtual reverse the right side up and the same size as the object. This only applies if the mirror is going to be uh, a straight mirror, not a convex mirror or a concave mirror. OK, for the last part of today, before we go on to the Kahoot, I'm going to talk about Snell's law. OK, Snell's law basically has to deal with refraction. So you know what refraction is? Basically, when you go to a pool or you stick a pencil in the water, some people say the pencil looks really broken, but honestly, I just think it looks kind of bent. That's refraction. Your uh, eyes are basically deceiving you on how far the pencil is from you, which is why it's going to be uh, it's going to look broken. So, um, yeah, basically. So here we have the two equations that you're really going to need for create the wave. So the first one is this one. The refractive index of the medium is the speed of a light in a vacuum over the um, speed of the light in the medium. The speed of a light in a vacuum is always, you're always going to use 3.0 times 10 to the power of 8 for it. OK, and so after we see that, some refractive indexes of some things to see normally, glass is around 1.5, water is going to be around 1.33, and uh, air is just one. The other part of that that's really important is uh, this equation. So you see here the, the signs of this, OK, this is the angle of incidence, and this is the angle of refraction. So the sign of the angle of incidence over the sign of the angle of refraction is going to be directly proportional to the um, velocity of the light in this medium over the velocity of the light in this medium. And it's also, uh, it's also equal to the, sorry, the refractive index of light in here versus in here. So I think the easier way to remember this equation, let me just write it, is going to be with this, Ooh, this text to be a little bit larger.
Oh my god. I, I'm sorry for the bad spelling. It should be. Anyways. Yeah, so that's basically Snell's Law in a nutshell. Okay, yeah, for any questions about the YouTube, you should probably ask um, Andrew. He's the one who's going to be posting it, I think. It does sound like Snell's Law. Okay, so yeah, that's basically it for this presentation. That's all we're going to knew that we're going to be learning today. And uh, I'm going to put the link for the cocoon in the chat. Additionally, for anyone who's wondering, the next two, uh, the next presentation is going to be on mousetrap vehicle and um, electric right stuff, which is basically right stuff, but um, with electricity. It's flying planes. I can't see the Kahoot link. Right now. What's the PID number? Okay, let me can you can you share the Kahoot screen on the screen? Sorry, uh, let me unpause share. Ah, I got it. Okay, sorry guys, can you see this? Yeah. yeah. Darn it. Um, wait a second. I need to log into the other account. Um, your thing also like is a bit glitchy, so. Link. Sorry, the link's not out yet. I'm going to give it in a bit. Okay, sorry guys, I'm trying to log into the other account, which allows you to have uh, more people, like more than 50. Yeah, sorry, we're going to do the Kahoot, I'm not lagging. <laughs> Okay, yeah, sorry, I'm here because, um, do any of you guys have any idea how to share a Kahoot? 
Like, kind of just, um, like, if you go into the Kahoot from your account, like, just copy the web page link, I guess. Like, if you go into, like, classic mode, and then it shows the loading game pin screen, then, like, if you copy that link, it should work. No, like, do you know how did you make a Kahoot not private? I mean, it should be private. I mean, like, you could share the screen and it should show the game, team, so we should be able to get it. Ask Mr. Google. I'm not that sure. When Kahoot is going to start? Um, Bing says, like, click on my Kahoot on the landing page, select the Kahoot, and then click public. Okay, got it. At least that's what it says. For you guys, uh, for now, um, we're just going to take a t uh, five to ten minute break. I'll call you guys back when I'm ready to uh, share the Kahoot. Sorry. One thing, I think you don't need to make it public. No, I know you have to type the pin in the chat, but right now it's only host... 50 people so i'll need to do oh. it somewhere else so i need to be able to access the kahoot from there so um okay. can you guys all be back at 4 40 we're yeah. going to take a break right now and i'll do the kahoot when we get back okay thank you and sorry for the technical difficulties okay.
Hey guys, sorry I'm back. Uh, so for the cuckoo, I can't figure out how to share it. So I'm going to push that until the end of this lesson. I'm going to do the engineering part of this first, which is going to be mousetrap vehicle and um, electric right stuff. To be honest, like, we don't need the public thing. I know, but I need to share it to another oh, yeah. account. Oh yeah, more than 50 people. Okay, so this is uh, for the second part of uh, today's stuff. This one is about engineering. So basically this year I had three events. I did electric bright stuff, mousetrap vehicle, and crave the wave. And I got second place on the state, state level and mousetrap vehicle. I think the worst part of it was you had to be there. And the thing about this, uh, engineering events is that there is the always the possibility of error so um, it's going to be different in every scenario I'm not that dude okay anyways so basically what I'd recommend for each of these things I have my mouse job right here is that you find somewhere to test it out. Definitely before you're going to do the, let me turn blur off, but you need to find a place to test it out before you're going to do the contest. Okay, so one of the important things is you need to read the rules really carefully because um, it's really easy to lose points from that. Uh, if you guys have any questions about this, you can ask them in the chat and I'll answer them at the end, by the way. Let me open the chat. Okay, so um, yeah, so for the mousetrap vehicle, the rules are really important, as I've already stressed. One of, the, one of the things is that you always need to wear eye protection for this one, and additionally, you need to follow their instructions for the dimensions. For mousetrap vehicle, I think usually you have to get there around 30 minutes to one hour if you're taking a video ahead of time. Yeah, Mark Rover has a really good video about mousetrap vehicles, and definitely don't get Gorilla Glue in your eye. So for mousetrap vehicle, I, uh, what, some of the main problems is that you need to build your mousetrap vehicle in tune to what the contest is. For the past year, Mark Rover is awesome. For the past year, the basic idea of mousetrap vehicle was you needed to get it to be as precise as possible to a certain, um, to how far it was. The mouse trap thing is not to play jump rope. Okay, so basically what it is, is it's a vehicle that you build by yourself and um, it's supposed to power itself from a mouse trap vehicle. What happens is, um, let me just show you on the screen. There you go. Should be able to see it better now. So what happens here is you have a mousetrap vehicle. This is the basic frame of it. And you have a pole arm here. So the pole arm has a string connected to it. And you're going to wind up the wheels with the power from the mousetrap. And when you let it go, um, it moves forward. So basically, um, there's a bunch of different choices for how you can build your mousetrap vehicle. For example, one of the things I'd recommend is not making your wheels with CDs because they're kind of flimsy and they break really easily. It's called mousetrap because it's uh, powered by a mousetrap here, as you can tell. So uh, basically you use the power from the string, you wind it up and it ends up like this. It snaps back really easily. Okay, so it moves forward from that. So some of the important things on how to build it, you should probably find a few videos on how the mousetrap vehicle works if you don't get it currently. And um, for precision, you need to find a way to, how, uh, to see how you measure it to be precise. So in this case, I believe I used pins and you would align the pins on the ground. Sorry, uh, don't use CDs for your wheels. You can use them, but uh, because they're light, they're lightweight, and you can wrap balloons around the sides, 
but um, it's better if you don't use them because they're really easy to break and they kind of till really easily. So for the past year, what we're trying to do is trying to establish precision within the mousetrap vehicle. So to make it go in a straight line, which is actually more difficult than it sounds. Yeah, you have to wrap balloons around the wheels. I've done it here. Uh, these are heavy duty balloons uh, around the wheels to add more friction so it stops more easily. Okay, so what you do is not only do you need to have an aiming device, one of the most uh, difficult parts of the mousetrap vehicle is making sure that your wheels don't curve. So you see here, all of these four wheels have to be parallel with each other in order for the mousetrap vehicle to be able to go straight. So one of the things I'd invest in is it's if you have a three access to a 3D printer, it's easier to do, but you need to get wheels and you need to get a good... Um, well, you need to get good ball bearings here so that the wheels spin easily. That's one of the mistakes I made in the beginning. And um, additionally, you need to measure how far your mousetrap vehicle goes. So just measure uh, the diameter of your wheel, multiply it by pi, and then divide your total um, distance by that to see how far you, how, how many times you have to make the wheel go around. Uh, there's a separate system on the back for the brakes here or a separate system on the back for the brakes. So what you do is usually, uh, I think Dr. Physics has some good, uh, a good website about this. You use a wing nut to crank the brakes shut once it's reached the end of the place your wheels can move. Okay, to answer some of the questions in the chat, Yes, you definitely use balloons. You can use wood to make the vehicle. If you want it to go faster, use lighter wood. For example, balsa wood is good, but it's also kind of expensive. Uh, technically, you can build it with a Lego set, but then you'll have to um, find a way to attach the mousetrap vehicle to that within the rules. And honestly, it's probably not the best thing to do because once you drop your mousetrap vehicle, like if you make it out, out of Legos, it's, it's just going to kind of shatter. Okay, and then for the next one is electric right stuff. So electric right stuff is basically a plane. It's just a really large plane. Uh, you can't see the tail here. But um, what we did here is this plane is made of balsa wood. I would highly suggest uh, having a kit for this unless you have your own um, laser cutter because things have to be really precise. For your plane to be able to fly, it has to be really, really lightweight, much more so than um, the mousetrap vehicle. For example, this plane, I think, is 13 to 14 grams total. So what you need is you need the wings. Uh, they're, they have to be rounded on the top in order for like the aer aerodynamics to work because the wind uh, goes better through it this way. And you need it to angle upwards. So if you want it to fly further up, this is what you change. The angle here, push the back down and push the front up. Additionally, I believe uh, there's two types of uh, planes. I have the other one too. Let me get the other base. Okay, so this, this plane right here, this plane base, this is a pull plane. So you're pulling the air with this, um, this fan motor thing. You're pulling the air from it. Instead, for this one, you're pushing the air. So uh, it might just be that we didn't tune these uh, planes I didn't tune the pulling plane, but I would highly suggest using pushing planes instead of the pulling planes. And um, yeah, so what you use to make the top, okay, this is, this plane is made by the Guru electric plane uh, for 22 kit. Uh, I don't think there is a electric right stuff in Division B next year. It changes out with right stuff, which uses rubber powered instead of electric powered. But here for the motor system we have here, this is the motor. It's a 3.05F motor. It has to be visible on the plane. And um, yeah, it didn't, it came with a charging port and a charger. So basically what you would do is you stick this charging port, uh, you stick the charger into the charging port, you charge it for around 10 seconds, then you take it off and let your plane fly. And um, this is something that we added ourselves. If you can see here, oh no. If you can see here, there is a on and off switch that's very useful for controlling when and where you want your plane to go.
So the basic idea of electric right stuff is you're going to want your plane to stay in the air as long as possible. I don't think this changes with the years, but last year I think was the first year that electric right stuff became a non-trial event. My plane, I think at most went around 40 seconds to 50 seconds in the air plus a bonus. And yeah, I think that's about it for the electric right stuff. Okay, now for some words of advice on testing your plane. So the plane always has to be tested indoors. I'm not sure if you noticed, but this thing is really fragile. Once it breaks, it breaks. So uh, if you're ordering a kit, you should probably order duplicates. Um, I cannot fly the plane right now because it's in my room and all I do is crash against the wall and I really don't feel like super gluing the plane again right now. But uh, what you do is, yeah, you charge it and then you launch it in the air. Uh, I do have a video demonstration of me flying the plane, so I'll show that in a second. Okay, so one important thing about both of these is both of these require a log. The log is the basic idea for you to, you need to measure which under which variables does your plane work best. Like how long would you charge it? And um, what is the usual angle in which you should uh, put the wings? How much should you tilt the back if you want it to go in a circle? Because you have finite space indoors and you're going to have to do this in a gym to keep it in the air uh, long enough. And um, what type of capacitor you use, stuff like that. And for mousetrap vehicle, it's the same thing, but usually with how much you wind the wheels instead. Okay, yeah, so now for the contest, make sure to arrive early. And if there's a time frame that you can record it in, these things take time. They take a lot more time than you were expecting. So um, arrive early and tweak around with your plane a little bit to make sure that it's ready to fly once you can, uh, once you take the video. I think you're allowed to do this with in-person contests too, but maybe in for not a lot, a lot of time. Mousetrap vehicle needs a lot of fine tuning if you're uh, if you need to get it accurately. Not only can you do this with pins, but you you can also add a uh, two block. I don't know how to describe it. You can add basically um, a aiming thing where you have a mousetrap vehicle and you look at it from the back and you see here there's this thing on the mousetrap vehicle see this goes to here this would be the end point of where you want to end up that's another idea but we didn't use that one okay and electric right stuff usually you would have to assemble the plane so i'd say it takes more time than a mousetrap vehicle okay so this is the basic diagram of how our electric uh, how our mousetrap vehicle worked. It was 30 centi uh, 36 centimeters across and I believe 16 centimeters between the two wheels. And we used clear polycarbonate sheet wheels, acrylic wheels, and used balloons for extra friction. Okay, so one thing I wanna talk about is if you wanna make it yourself versus with a kit. If you have more time, then you could make it yourself. It's an easier way of, to learn how the mousetrap vehicle works. But if you're short on time and if the contest is soon, then uh, you know that the kits are guaranteed to work. Okay, yeah, that's basically it for this. Let me show you a video of the mousetrap vehicle running. Okay, this is it. I think this is the video, let, let me start from here. It's two minutes and 16 seconds. I don't think this has any audio. I included the panda because the panda was cute. <laughs> okay, so once, okay, I'm sorry if this is really, really laggy, but you should be able to see how it works just about. Right now it's not moving much, but what you do is you hit the end of it with a pencil and you can't touch it after that. I'll send the Gmail, my Gmail in the chat, yeah. So for this contest, the mousetrap vehicle had to go back behind the one meter line and go back forward and end up closer to, um, well, as close to the target as possible. I'm sorry if I'm lagging. Um, can I send the link in the chat? Okay, 
I'm really sorry if I'm lagging and can't play videos right now. But, um, yeah. How much of that could you guys see? Um, a bit. Like, Not much. Like, six out of ten, maybe. Okay, I'll just pause it on certain points then, and... Oh, sorry, I can't share the link for this one. Okay, so I'll just pause the video in certain points. So you have to tap the mouse trap with a uh, pencil. And after that, it should be able to go by itself behind the one meter line and um, go back forwards. Sorry, Aaliyah, do you have any questions? I'll answer them as like I skip through the video. Um, like, can you send the link in the chat? Oh, yeah, okay. Um, I don't have the link currently because this is not a cropped video. So unless you really, really want an eight minute video of me tweaking the mouse, like me editing the mousetrap vehicle, um, I'll see if I can send it later. But, um, yeah, I'll see what I can do about that. Okay, let me pause here and find the video of the electric right stuff playing, though I'm not sure it'll work too well. Okay, so basically for electric right stuff, the aim of it is to get your plane in the air as, uh, as much as possible. So what you have to do is you have to tilt the uh, tail like this. And um, it'll go in circles. Okay, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, we'll do Kahoot soon. Okay, yeah. Um, you know what? I'll see if I can. Um, in, you you guys can email me for a short clip of the um plane later because i don't think it's going to work very well if i play it right now so instead um i'm just going to sort out uh, the rest of the technical difficulty with with the kahoot and see if i can share it so i'll be back at 505 um i can't send a link until the kahoot is ready <laughs> sorry guys Is this break? What's going on? I think she's trying to do the Kahoot, getting the Kahoot yeah, ready. She's trying to do the Kahoot, so, and then she'll be back at five. Oh, okay. Yeah. Kahoot ready. Let's just look at the chat.
Okay, so uh, right now I'm going to share my screen and start a 15 member Kahoot for now, and I'll see if I can start another one if there's too many people and it overflows. Okay. As soon as this loads would be great. Your show answer choices on player screens on. I can't get in you though. Me either. Me too. Me too. Me too. Same. Same. There's something wrong. It says some connection issues. It keeps saying checking your nickname. Okay. That's probably my connection. No, I mean, like, the checking your nickname thing might take a while, but, like, a lot of people who are already in probably have reconnecting issues now. It says trying in 765 from 3 to 1 second. Okay. Yeah, so you probably came in before. You like... keep on saying that we've disconnected. Okay. There um, are quite yeah, a few I just yeah. Everyone, there are a bit of technical difficulties yeah. right now. Emily, we can't even hear you at all. Oh, okay. And can you turn on show answer to questions and answers on player screens? That's the first setting. I think she's doing that right now, but. It's oh. really, really, really laggy. She looks like. Yeah, we can't really tell. Oh, wow. Wait, can you, like. Oh, yeah, I'm in now. It just keeps on saying checking your nickname. I know, it's loading so long. Yeah, the internet is so bad. Just buy a better one. You can't you buy better internet. Buy a better internet. Yeah. Hey. You have to get a better internet. Oh, can you show questions and answer on player Guys, screen? let's not shame Emily's internet. That's really yeah. sub nice. And it's also called being spoiled. What I call being impatient. I'm also impatient. Okay. How do these people go? In? I'll be right back. I hope this works. Okay, um, to fill the awkward silence, what has your guys' favorite event been so far? Our favorite what? Event. 
Crime Busters. Crime Busters. No. Crime Busters and uh, Dynamic crime, Planet. Crime Busters. Crime Busters and the and the crime right Buster. crime and the right crime stuff. Crime Busters. Storm the castle. A lot, a lot, a lot of crime busters. Crime few- busters and Stormda. She started the thing without like um in the being in the meeting. I guess we'll just have to guess. I guess so. Uh, and she didn't exactly like turn on the um show and she on player screen. So okay. I mean, um, so Emily- it just looked- oh yikes! Oh, actually, she did turn Everyone. it on. Please listen. Um, Emily has made a made the like show questions available uh i think she's just going to remotely uh host this from now so she won't be back on zoom and she will start a new she will start a new link i will send it in the chat right now it's been taking too much off of her internet so here um i see a lot of crime busters i'll go and tell shang so he's been a good teacher Does everyone see the link in the chat? Yes, yeah. sir. Yes. Who works? That's good. Yeah. What is it about Crime Busters that you guys all like? Yeah. We bust the crime, so it's we're like basically being the detective. No, I mean like I've done four genetics before. It's pretty fun. It's just funny because when it's just that. The maturity level of a kid equals watching people get arrested. Yeah. Right. I mean, he isn't wrong. It's been a while since I've been a kid, so, um, yeah. How old are you? Um, um, I like to say I'm 72. I am actually 15. Wait, you're 72? You're still not no, an adult. No, I'm actually so you- 15. You're not an adult, so you must be a child. Trust. Okay, now I might not be an adult, but I'm you look like not a, exactly a child. A child. More importantly, she, has everyone joined yet? Yep. Larry, what are you doing? We have a new Kahoot link. Then I send it to everyone. I thought you were saying a new one? Yeah, new link. I'm sorry. Larry is not in this class. Wow, yeah, you're so funny. Are not nice. I'm even in the class. I just joined randomly. Wow, Leon, you're so. Okay. Um. Has anyone who wants to join not joined yet? Yeah. There's an answer thing that says that's absolutely nothing like a lazy potato. I like that answer. Uh, has she started the Kahoot? I don't think it's. Yes, well, it's yeah, 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 yeah. It started. It started. It did. Yeah. Okay. It's literally in progress. Oh, Ian, I'm behind you. Nice. nice. Very cool. I guess like three questions and it was all correct. Okay, that's just awesome. I, I think there's that. only been good RNG be like I get it wrong. I always get it wrong. Yeah. Oh my god. I'm guessing now. I didn't like spaghetti. It's not C. Don't listen to that person. Why not? I'm behind you, Elaine. Who's this? Who's sharing? Wait, who's Andrew? The guy that's presenting the screen. The presentation's on the wrong question.
Wait, which link are we supposed to be on? Because I'm very confused. No idea. The last link. The one that Andrew sent. I'm literally doing both. What is that sound? It's the yellow one. Uh, that is definitely not the answer. Of course it is. We already did this question though, right? What would you expect? I already did this one. Is, is the one next to it? Purple octopus. I'm literally just guessing, literally, because I'm so confused. There are two links and I'm literally doing both. I just joined in the middle. So I, I no just idea. joined I just joined both of the links, literally. Who asked? No, I joined in the middle of the class. I have no idea. That's a big mistake. Who's presenting? Andrew. Andrew. No, for the wave thingy. Um, Wait, wave. he's playing? What type of wave? Wait, for what the what type of wave question? Just keep clicking the same one because it's not the same one. Oh God, I actually, I actually guess correct. Is anybody still doing the first link? No idea. No, we're not. Go to the second link. Mm -hmm. Eleven. Oh, this one's the green one. I'm just kidding. So what? Like the green it's one. It's It's totally not the um, yellow one, by the way. I'm just pointing out. It's like, click the green one. Click the green one. Obviously. Yeah, the green one. Mm. Did that? They sound like a goat. Whoever is making the sound, stop it. They also sound like Voldemort, like the goat. <laughs> Why would that sound like sound like a Voldemort? Because Please shoot yourself. Insert goat noises here. Yeah, goat noises. No one asked about goat noises. I'm literally just guessing on every question. Who asked? Nobody. Then why did you say that exactly? I asked. Yeah, no. Fine, I'll mute. <laughs> we know who it is. I can see it on your screen. Don't play horse noises. Mon square. Randomly, be randomly click green. <laughs> Last. Guys, it was the wrong buy. Who is Metal Mario? That's me, Kevin. Hello. Um, 
One cloud is going to be over. Minion. Someone really sounds like a minion. Whoever's. I'm just going to log in. No one said it would be easy. It's blue.
That is true. I am muted. Uh, so we have three minutes left. Two minutes left, actually. Um, teacher Emily is gone. Um, you know what? You guys can unmute. I'm letting you guys free. So you guys do whatever you want. Why Emily, did she go bye-bye? Her Wi-Fi was gone. Oh. Um, okay so while everyone is here um i may as well go in, go into the details of our final two days um so for tomorrow i believe our last instructor who hasn't presented yet caroline will present and then she will do disease detectives and rocks and minerals and for what Anderson, you missed the cow. You missed the cow one, Anderson. What? The the cow one? You missed. I regret it. letting you guys mute. You missed it. Oh wow. Shush, everyone. Shush. Well, you can't regret it now. Oh, you can. Okay. As I was saying, um. Tomorrow, yeah. busy detectives and rocks it? and minerals. It's uh, not the... On Friday, we will do a comprehensive review. Um, we will do a comprehensive review in the form of a trial event, actually. It's Science Quiz Bowl. I will be hosting it with Samuel. So basically, you guys are... We're going to do one massive review with a lot of the stuff that we have been covering throughout these past two weeks, but also we're going to also we're going to incorporate some very basic science questions. So something along the lines of uh, which state of matter is between solid and gas type easy and maybe a few harder ones too, but these will serve as a review while also kind of making it competitive. So uh, I have a lot of people wanting us to unmute. Um, I'm no, class is over. Um, I'm gonna stop the recording. You guys do whatever the heck you want.